All right, in this video, I'm gonna go over what respiratory acidosis is. I'm gonna keep it as simple and basic as, as I possibly can. All right, so whenever you see respiratory acidosis, that simply simply means that the CO2, the carbon dioxide in the blood is higher than it should be, all right? It's dangerously high to where the blood becomes acidic. All right, that's all that means. So every time you see respiratory acidosis, that means that you have a lot of CO2 in your blood. So why is this happening? Well, the buildup of blood of, of CO2 is occurring because not obviously not enough CO2 is leaving the body. So you, for some reason, you can't breathe out um, enough uh, CO2. So let me, see, let me see. Here's the anatomy. So that's supposed to be a trachea. Let me write that. Okay, so trachea. It's B for bronchi. I don't want to put that. Bronchioles and the alveoli. All right, and that's where all the gas exchange occurs. Man, this is too. I did it too big. All right, so now that we got, uh, we know what respiratory acidosis is that it's just it just means that there's a lot of co2 in the blood let's get some numbers so i'm gonna give you guys some numbers uh as to to know when your patient is actually uh in respiratory acidosis so as far as the ph in the blood if it's below 7.35 your patient is acidic all right the blood is acidic now as far as the measurement um, in like capnography, for example, I think that's the right one, but look it up. Um, if the normal, the normal levels uh, for CO2 in the blood is between 35 and 45. I reversed it just because that way you can have the numbers, um, where, uh, that are acidic on the same side. But if the measurement is above 45, then your patient, uh, is, has respiratory acidosis. And uh, let's go into what can possibly cause this. So what is going to cause your patient to not be able to breathe out a CO2 or enough CO2? So here I put a few reasons why your patient would not be able to breathe out that CO2. I spelled morphine wrong. Oh, well. So drugs, uh, drugs is one reason why. So opioids um, or morphine. Well, with this one, you can also add heroin into the mix because that... Uh, that suppresses your uh, respiratory rate per minute. It will suppress it because it affects your respiratory center inside the brain. So another one is edema. That means that you have a lot of fluid, uh, fluid buildup inside the lungs. So what happens is with edema, around the alveoli, if you have excess of fluid or that's building up around your alveoli in your lungs, because that's supposed to be your lungs right there, then that water, or I'm sorry, fluid, gets between the actual alveoli and the capillaries that surround the alveoli, and it, it, it interferes with that gas exchange. So now we can't, uh, we can't have the CO2 uh, latch into the alveoli so you can then breathe it out. So that's one thing that could happen. So edema. So along with that, you also have pneumonia, which can also cause edema. Now pneumonia is uh, an infection, and you, tend to have a buildup of mucus in the lungs and fluid also uh, that goes to the lungs because of the infection. Again, the same reason, the gas exchange is uh, interrupted by the mucus and fluid and be that um, the gas exchange between the alveoli, so the alveoli and the capillaries that surround the alveoli. I wish I had a different mark, but what else do I got? All right, so uh, head trauma, that's another one, head trauma can cause your patient to go to uh, have respiratory acidosis uh, and have because they have a buildup build up of CO2. And so that can happen because again, I mentioned the respiratory center that's in the brain. So if you have head trauma and that's affected, then see, so there you go. Let me back up a little bit. So here are all the reasons why your patient may be going um, into respiratory acidosis or have respiratory acidosis. 
and then pulmonary uh, emboli that means that there's a blockage in one of the vessels going into the heart i mean into the lungs or leaving the lungs all right that's causing a backup of blood from leaving so you can't have that gas exchange as far as bronchial spasms that you get um from asthma or a severe allergic reaction or anaphylaxis it's the same thing as allergic reaction severe allergic reaction is anaphylaxis so with that with the part that's, that's affected all right so with edema and pneumonia we're mainly we're concerned about the alveoli that's what's being affected that's the the part that's being affected in the system now with uh emboli vessels other vessels are being affected the ones that leave the capillaries or bring blood to the capillaries with uh bronchial spasms obviously the bronchioles these little pipes that branch off from the bronchi are being affected affected so if they're spasming if they're spasming then air is not going to be able to go through them so co2 can't be taken out out of your system so that's pretty much it um to keep it keep it simple simple respiratory acidosis just means that you have a higher concentration of co2 in the blood than you should um that's really all it means why do you have an increase of co2 because you can't get the co2 out for some reason you can't breathe it out i uh, can't get can't get out of your system now what can cause you to not be able to breathe out co2 uh drugs edema pneumonia trauma head trauma specifically pulmonary embolism uh bronchial spasms and here are the numbers one more time i'm gonna make a video on this later on but as far as if your ph level is lower than 7.35 your patient is acidic if the uh, co2 measurement is above 45 then your patient is acidic all right and then like i said i'll talk about all this later on hopefully it kind of helped i felt like i stumbled through it but i'm sure somebody will get benefit from it